I have on me is the haversack. Every soldier had a haversack. Now, you can throw personal items in here, sure. Um, it was more or less designed to carry food, uh, such as salted pork. Um, you could have uh, pieces of bread, um, what was called ship's bread or hardtack. Um, I carry my tin cup in here for coffee or um, you know tea if I happen to capture some British soldiers or hey maybe even a little bit of rum if I capture a British officer. You know how they like their rum. I also obviously have an apple in here for later on a long march if I'm hauling a giant artillery piece I'm going to work up an appetite so I have a nice apple. And the diet diets of soldiers varied if they were at a fortification uh, or a base such as Sackett's Harbor uh, they would be again probably living off the land but there, were, there was a better chance that they would get uh, better food or, or at least halfway decent food. Um, troops that were on the march, troops that were out uh, way beyond the area of normal supply, uh, they would be almost strictly living off the land. Uh, carbon, da uh, carbon, um, carbon samples were taken from skeletons uh, that were exhumed uh, over by Fort Erie, which is across the Niagara River uh, from Buffalo in Ontario, uh, and carbon, the uh, carbon samples were taken and they found uh, that the diet consisted primarily of corn and fish. Uh, and when the Americans uh, salted and took Fort Erie in uh, July of uh, 1814, that was pretty much what they had. They had that supply line running across the river to Buffalo, but for the most part, uh, if you think about western New York, if you've ever been out to western New York, there are many cornfields and there are many little creeks and streams and lakes and rivers that you can get fish from. Uh, so it was a very easy diet to obtain. Um, so again, it really depended on where you were. Uh, troops that fought in the south uh, that were down in, in uh, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Louisiana, Virginia, their diets again may have varied slightly. There may have been uh, um, you know, more beef or, or even pork. Uh, there would definitely be more fish, especially in coastal areas. But uh, again, the, the diet of the soldier, it, it varied and the quality of the food varied. Um, there were times where you got just awful, horrible, moldy bread or bad food and you just had to stomach it and swallow it. And again, that led to sickness, that led to disease, uh, which was really more dangerous than a bayonet or a musket was. Um, especially when troops went into winter quarters, that's when you had diseases. They were rampant. Um, but, and again, I've already explained the cartridge box. I wanted to show you a little bit more about that though. The cartridge box, this is the 1808 style cartridge box that was issued to the United States military. Um, Army troops had this, Marine Corps had this, uh, state militias were issued these. Um, this block comes out, and this is obviously drilled out for 26 cartridges. I carry 26 rounds. Obviously I've got some missing. I've been fighting. Um, so this sits in there, but in the bottom is a nice little tin compartment where I keep all my tools. Um, I've got a bore cleaner, I've got a flint hammer, a brush for cleaning, uh, various, uh, essentially various like flathead screwdrivers. Um, so everything that I needed to essentially keep my gun firing was also kept in here. Uh, in addition to all these accoutrements, um, I also have a little what they call a uh, vent prick, which after you fire this weapon for quite some time, as you can see, it soots up. Black powder soots up. And this little hole down here can get blocked. So that's what this is for. If I have a misfire, I stick this in here to help clean the hole and push some more powder in, fresh powder, in order to get this gun to fire. And uh, in, again, in addition to all this, uh, troops on a long march would be issued a knapsack which is essentially just a big backpack with a bedroll in it. Um, you could stick more personal items in there, uh, decks of cards, books, uh, things of that nature. And um, I don't have one of those. I, I'm, I'm portraying a soldier that was in a garrison or in a fortification. So uh, all, my, all my things, all my extended gear, I guess you could say, would be at whatever base or fort I was at. So uh, I think that's about it. Um, Oh, footwear. Uh, leather footwear, obviously, was really the only thing you could wear. Now, you may notice these boots look a little newer. Uh, that's because they are, because where we're standing today is uh, very wet, very moist. We're in a marsh. But, um, again, the color of the boots is not all that different from what soldiers would have. Usually they would be black, but a lot of times they would be brown. Um, and, again, 
the farther off the beaten path you were during the War of 1812, the more your uniform varied, the more your supplies varied. Uh, you might not have what the uh, Army Manual would say is standard issue, perhaps, but that's all that could be afforded for your, your regiment, would be whatever you could get, even from local tailors. So, yeah, I think that's about it, actually. Um, it stinks I can't answer anybody's questions because I'm filming a video, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to let Mr. Vigliotti know and he can communicate with me and uh, I can answer some of your questions for you. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.